Tatiana looked up at me with a smile that seemed to say, My God, you're awesome with the sex and the stuff you did right before the sex. Oh, hello there. I didn't see you come in. I'm your erotic host, Dennis Reynolds. Hmm. Welcome to another installment of Dennis Reynolds, An Erotic Life. Let us turn erotically to another installment of Dennis Reynolds, An Erotic Life. Chapter One, Memoirs with a Geisha. It was a karaoke soiree, and I'd finished singing a ferocious version of Astley's Together Forever. Many bonable damsels were in attendance, but tonight I craved something more exotic. Something like the matronly Japanese woman smiling at me from behind a large paper fan. There was something undeniably alluring about this maiden. This geisha queen gave me a come-hither wink. I think it was a wink. It's hard to tell with the, the eye patch. And in an instant I was by her side. And as I got closer I realized she was a good deal older than I thought. And she seemed to smell of halibut or some other whitefish. I helped her out of her kimono laying my eyes upon what appeared to be miles and miles of naked flesh. There also appeared to be some sort of cesarean scar. Having seen that, I opted to blow the candle out. In the darkness, she whispered in my ear, Promise me you won't fall in love with me. I promised her, but I knew it was a promise I was soon to break. Nestled in her ample wound, I became a man. Her guttural moans awakened a beast in me, and I pounded away like some sort of jackhammer, jackrabbit hybrid that I like to call a jackhabit. We collapsed in each other's arms. We're quite sure what to say. Oh, I made some small talk about how Ken Watanabe was a great actor. But it was too late. The conversation went nowhere fast. I went to the bathroom, and by the time I emerged, she was in her kimono again and placing the chopsticks back in her hair. I was unable to mask my sorrow. Said. I told you, Dennis Reynolds, turn the fall in love with me. And then she popped her eye patch back in place and assured me that she'd call, but the look in her eye <laughs> told a different tale. Fini. One could say our love was more heels over head than head over heels. Get it? Because we fucked a lot. And it was fun. It was very fun. Oh, hello again. You're very sneaky. As you know, I'm Dennis Reynolds, author of the award-winning Dennis Reynolds, An Erotic Life. Let's turn to another chapter, shall we? Chapter two. Like a virgin. We stumbled into my erotic lair, drunk on lust, boom, and Jaeger bombs. I began to undress. Off came my parka, my sweater, a button down, my boots, my gloves, and finally, my hunting hat. Whilst it was a cold night, I admit, I should have layered less. I eased her back onto my bed. 
The room is spinning, she said. Yes, I replied. I know. The gentle sounds of vomit meeting the bathtub did very little to quell the fire in my nether regions. Upon her return 30 minutes later, I removed my last article of clothing. My long undies. She gasped. Breathtaking, I must have looked. Bathed in the warm, soothing glow of the black-on-blonde pornography that had started well before I left the house that evening to go out. Her thirst for me then began to reach unquenchable levels, because upon seeing me, she grabbed a flask that I had filled with vodka and started downing it fast. <sighs> she closed her eyes and looked afar and mumbled, Just put it in me. My dear, I replied, I'm already in you. So in tune were we. Say my name, she whispered listlessly. But alas, I had no idea what her name was. She began to weep. <laughs> Tears of immense pleasure, I have no doubt. Is that the spot? I said to her. But she remained silent. I understood. Words could not express the eroticism of our time. Three minutes later, I was asleep, resting in the sweet cocoon of knowledge that I'm pretty sure I was her first, and that, that she would remember this night for a long, long time. And that eventually, she would have to seek therapy. Dunzo.